Okay, in this video, we are going to find the minimum distance between two things that are moving according to parametric equations. So what I've done already is I've actually defined um, the parametric equations. I like to store the component functions because it just makes everything look a lot cleaner um, and it's just easier to not make mistakes this way. So I have x1 of t is three minus five over 20t and y1 of t is eight plus six over 20t and then x2 is negative 2 plus 6 over 18t and y2 is 12 minus 7 over 18 times t so um, object 1 is going to take 20 units of time so i usually say seconds um, to complete its motion and object 2 takes 18 seconds to complete its motion and this isn't like a super complicated problem so we don't really need to worry about the fact that they don't move for the same amount of time um, one thing that i will mention here is the biggest mistake that I see people make is when they define their function. So say I want to define x5, um, people will forget to say of t. So they'll just define x5 uh, is like colon equals um, 3t plus 1. The calculator um, doesn't actually say done there. It hasn't stored a function, it's just stored an expression. So x5 will come up, um, but the calculator doesn't really know what to do with um, this as a function. So when you try to do something like x5 of t, it'll say name is not a function. Um, and that's an error that you'll see kind of frequently if you forget that. So when you do define this, you want to do x5 of t and then colon equals and then uh, 3t plus 1. And now if you do x5 of t, you notice that it says done instead of just repeating the expression. And also if you do x5 of t, the calculator returns what we want. So um, that's the biggest mistake that I see people make. Um, and it does lead to that error uh, where the name is not a function. So let's see how we can do this. So we want to find the distance between two things. So essentially, the parametric equations represent a point, right? So there's an ordered pair at x1, y1, and an ordered pair at x2, y2. So to find the distance between these things as they move, we actually just use the distance formula. So it's going to be, I'm going to name it d. So d of t, and then colon equals, so that's control, and then uh, the, whoops, control, why is that not working? Okay, control, and then the templates, and I'm going to use square root. So this is one way of doing it. There's another way that I'll show you at the end of the video, um, but it depends uh, if you know what vectors are, and I don't know if you do. So uh, it's the distance, now I'm opening parentheses because I'm gonna do, uh, Ooh, not that. So if you press the var key, we can do x2 of t, and then minus var key x1 of t, and then we need to square that, and then plus quantity. And so using the var key uh, really simplifies this, especially when you're on the handheld, because it's just easier than having to type these again. y1 of t, and then squared. Press enter, it says done. So if you want to see what the um, distance formula looks like, you can now, we can use the var key or you can just type D. So var key of T, um, so you get that. So that's not, I mean, that's the equation. It's not super useful if you had to evaluate it by hand, but if I plug in one, uh, I'm gonna put in a decimal here to get a decimal answer back. Uh, that's how far apart the two things are at T equals one. And so we can, sit here and punch these in and, and you can see so at two they're closer together um, but a better thing to do I think is to look at what the equation looks like so let's add so I'm going to press doc option four in the same problem I'm going to add a graph page and so you can see here uh, these are functions and they're functions of x so anything I graph here I have to use x as the variable but that's okay because the calculator doesn't care that I defined the function as a function of t because um, I can use any variable I want at this point. So what I'm going to do is press the var key and d of x so that it'll graph. If you try to do d of t, it asks if you want to uh, create a slider and you don't want that. And also it just won't graph anything at the end. Um, so I'm going to press enter. And then I need to kind of change the window a little bit. So I'm just going to click and drag. And here we can see. So this is a graph of distance as a function of time, 
which means that the horizontal axis represents times and the vertical axis represents distances. Um, so any ordered pair, so if I do uh, menu and then option five is trace and graph trace. And if I type in, you can actually just type in values uh, zero and then I'm gonna hold the right key and you can watch. So the distance between the two things is decreasing. It's gonna hit a minimum. Um, and you can see there, so sometimes that doesn't actually work. The minimum doesn't come up. So I'm gonna show you another way to do that, but you can find it from trace. So the minimum distance between these things is 1.23. Uh, I like to round to three decimals. So 1.231 and it occurs at T equals 6.961. Um, and then the distance will start increasing. So if that doesn't work, if the minimum doesn't show up, what you do is menu and then six is analyze. Oh boy, let's undo that. Oh man, okay, hold on. So menu, I gotta turn my graph type back to function. Okay, so menu, and then six, and then minimum. And then you gotta click uh, to the left of the minimum, and then drag, and then click somewhere to the right and it'll paste it for you. So there's our minimum. Um, so there's one other way that I wanna show you that you can enter this distance formula. But this is it, this is how you can um, find the minimum distance. So I'm gonna go back here, so press Control and to the left, we'll take you back there. Um, a second way of entering the distance formula is to think of the vector that's formed between the um, two points, right? So one of them's initial, one of them's terminal. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna find the norm of that vector. So that's menu seven, and then option seven, and then option one. So that's norm, and now I need to give it a vector. So the vector I'm gonna give it, so control and then open parentheses, I'm gonna use terminal point, I'll say is x2 of t comma y2 of t, and then minus initial point. So I'm gonna create a vector between x, uh, you know, point two and point one. So this will all be the ones of t comma y1 of t, I'm gonna ask it to find the norm, press enter, and now if I do d2 of t, I get this, and if I compare it to d of t, you can see we get exactly the same thing. It's a little easier to enter this, but it's a little harder to remember, especially if you haven't really done vectors before. Um, but if you're in my class, you've definitely done vectors, so I think this is the way you should go. Um, all right, that's it. So I hope you found this video helpful, and good luck.